Hello, Mark Wolf, Lead International Trainer for Emergency Reporting. We're here today to review the Rover Mobile app setup and basic operations. The discussion today assumes that you as a user is set up in your department's portal and you have downloaded the Rover Mobile app from the appropriate app store. In the upper right hand corner of your Rover Mobile app, We'll select the menu stack and then select settings. In the upper left corner, there's a field for your phone number. Enter the 10 characters from your phone number with no spaces, hyphens, dashes, or other characters. Below that, you'll enter your PIN number. If you don't know what your PIN number is, after you enter your phone number, select the PIN button and you'll receive a text with your PIN number from your organization. Below that, we have the three alarm tones. For alarms, the standard tone is the default setting. For messages, a continuous tone. And for threshold alerts, we've got a tone selected for that. These all mimic Minotaur 5 pagers, and you have several options that you can choose from. If you select the drop down arrow, you can select a different tone for that particular message. Below that, we can assign response buttons. Typically, your response buttons will be your preset number one and your preset number two. You can adjust them if you need to, depending on the presets your department has set up for you. Below that, we have broadcast location check. Upon selecting a response button on the summary page, the system will display your icon on the map. And also below that, you see we have the GPS base time checked with your location of your device and the location of either your station or scene. In the case of my presets, the system will determine an estimated time of arrival based upon your location and the location of the station or the scene. We have the device set to stay awake responding. That is the default setting and the best option. You can change it to stay awake never or stay awake always. Stay awake responding is the default setting and your best option to keep the app open while you're responding. Below that, we have the show related departments. If you have interagency set up in your portal to work with other Rover customers, customers, you will need to select that. Below that, we have flash pre-plans checked. If there's a pre-plan that pops up for an incident within the circle, and the default setting is 200 meters for a pre-plan, the pre-plan button on your summary page will flash. Below that, we have the night mode off. You have some other settings that you can choose. The night mode off will keep the app bright for you. Whenever you're responding, you can set it to auto or the on selection. After you set up these particular settings, remember to always do a fetch and a save for your device, and you'll re be redirected back to the summary page. On the summary page, you'll note my preset buttons at the top of the page and will indicate that I am responding to station one or to the scene as I've set up in my setting. To the right of that, you'll note that the pre-plan button is flashing. As for this alarm that's displayed, we do have a pre-plan within the pre-plan radius displaying. For a map of the incident, I simply take my device, position it horizontal, and you'll see the map displayed on the right and we can use this map to zoom in. If you need turn-by-turn -turn directions, select the arrow in the small circle to the right of the alarm information and the mapping software in your particular device will turn on. And you'll be able to select turn-by-turn -turn directions from your current location. Also note that we do have one firefighter our new user that has indicated that they are out of service. That is the states of your individuals, anyone other than those that are selected to be in service. 
On the alarm page, we can display active calls. We can display resolved calls and we can re display all calls. In this particular case, we're going to go back to active and display to you that if we select the active call, it will take us to that call. We have our presets buttons available at the top of the page. Also, we can display the map of the incident and the status of any responders. Also within the app, we can resolve the call by selecting Resolve. On the message page, you will see a list of recent messages. Depending on the message type, you will have three actions available when selecting the message. Delete, Reply, or Reply All. To post a message from the app, we'll select the Post Message button at the bottom of the page and we'll be able to send a message out. We'll send this message to the bulletin board and we'll select post and that message will be sent out. On the map page, the location of your last alarm will be displayed. To add or edit a map item, we'll go to the mapping options which is in the upper left-hand corner of the map. We can select the type of map we want displayed. We can add map object. Selecting capture will capture your lo current location. We can select what type of object we're going to save. Hydrant, pre-plan, address alert, or field card. We can select the icon for our object. Make the map item private, public, related, or restricted. Then we can enter information about that particular map object in the summary and comment fields then save. Based upon permissions, quick messages may be enabled for you. Selecting the envelope button in the upper left corner of the screen, we can select a quick message which is set up in the portal. In addition to that, if you have quick alarm set up in your portal, they will be available on this page as well. If we have an all hands fire, for example, we can send out that message and immediately post it to your system. Okay, we're going to revisit the options menu and look at what's um, there besides the settings. So we select our options menu button in the upper left and we see that we can reset users. This will reset all users to their default state when selected. Back to Options Users. In Options Users, we can select a user, send them a message, or select one of their presets. Options Menu. We look at Schedules. So if you're using the Event Calendar, in this case I have a special event. And we have one person that is registered out of six for that event. We'll go back to the options, select refresh. This is a simple refresh of the app. And one last thing to look at is in the options menu and our links. All of the links that are available in the portal are available here in the app as well. That concludes our lesson for today.